tonight on the South Today. A Dunedin recycling scheme is receiving high praise and a supreme award for its efforts with some tricky packaging. Invercargill's Q Pacific Island Learning Centre welcomes a special guest to celebrate healthy lifestyles. And homeless people in Christchurch are thankful for a new resource which is helping their self-esteem. Kia ora, good evening, I'm Hannah Wilkins. A Dunedin woman working to combat a gap in recycling is still in shock about the recognition of her work. Lisa de Klerk was awarded the Jan Tucker Special Award at the Keep Dunedin Beautiful Community Award ceremony this week for her work in leading an initiative to recycle the often tricky liquid paperboard products. These cartons, generally known as Tetra Pak, typically contain long-life milk, juice and plant-based milks. They can't be recycled through the Dunedin City Council rubbish collection. However, One Coast Community Facilitator Lisa de Klerk has been recycling them for a while, recently winning her the supreme prize at the Keep Dunedin Beautiful Awards. For people who uh, have shown uh, the energy and the enthusiasm of the late Jane Tucker, it's been around for, for two years now, so I'm the second recipient. De Klerk led the initiative while working as a One Coast Community Facilitator. She and a small team collect the cartons, then send them to a Hamilton business, which then turns the boxes into sustainable building products. The, uh, the liquid paper for cartons need to be cleaned and opened, so cut along one side and you can keep the spout and the lid on because that helps to act as the glue when they uh, become sustainable building products. There are now seven Tetra Pak collection points between Mosgiel and Waikoua 80. Going forward, they plan to look into a more environmentally friendly way to expand processing capability. The Tetra Pak Recycling Scheme is a collaboration between One Coast and Waihimo Wastebusters in Palmerston. In Dunedin, the South Today. A Dunedin vet says introducing cat controls is about the welfare of the animals, not killing them. Her group is trying to change the minds of those who are on the fence about the most recent push towards a national cat management strategy. For many years, at certain times of the year, the Otago SPCA becomes overrun with too many cats. Veterinarians for Animal Welfare Aotearoa Managing Director Helen Beatty is proposing an alternative to the last option to control the cat numbers. The intention and the reason for starting the conversation again is to seek support for national level uh, cat control, protecting our cats and also protecting our native biodiversity. Helen Beatty held a public meeting and launched a petition at the Lake Wanaka Centre on Thursday. She says if followed, the petition would require all pet cats to be registered, microchipped and de-sexed, with an exception for registered cat breeders. A motorcyclist has died after a crash in the Waitaki Valley this afternoon. A police spokeswoman has confirmed emergency services were advised of the crash on the Kurao Duntroon Road about 12.40pm. A person died at the scene and no other vehicles were involved. The crash had closed State Highway 83 east of the intersection of Eastern Road. However, by 3.40pm it reopened to one lane with stop-go traffic management in place. Well, children had a hearty experience at the Q Pacific Island Learning Centre in Invercargill on Thursday. Youngsters and staff were celebrating the 20th anniversary of the Healthy Heart Award programme, and a special guest turned up too. There were plenty of excited shrieks, hugs and high fives from children at Invercargill's Q Pacific Island Learning Centre as they gave a hearty welcome to the Heart Foundation's mascot to celebrate 20 years of the Healthy Heart Award programme. The children were really excited to welcome Hearty. It's also Cook Island Language Week, so they greeted um, Hearty with a big warm kia ora for a welcome. And we decided to, um, to use some of the songs that are familiar to the children so that Hearty could join in and do some dancing. The programme is committed to improving nutrition and increasing physical activity among learning centres throughout the country. The Invercargill Centre has been part of the programme since 2005 and Centre Manager Rebecca Faalologo Robertson says the children enjoyed welcoming Hearty in true Pacifica style. And it's been a, a bit of a celebration um, for their 20th anniversary for the Healthy Heart Award and something that our centre has been a part of for the last 15 years. Faalologo Robertson says the changes that have been made in the healthy eating and physical activity policies have been fantastic. 
The Healthy Heart Award program has worked with more than 600 early learning services and has helped and supported about 40,000 children. In Invercargill, the South Today. Dunedin firefighters sprung into action after an alarm activation yesterday, which was ultimately caused by someone overheating bread. Fire and Emergency New Zealand Senior Station Officer Martin Hastie says appliances from Roslyn, St Kilda and Dunedin City stations were called to a high street address about 11.30am. Firefighters found a smoke-filled building when they arrived and made sure all residents were out. It turns out that burnt toast had set off fire alarms, so Fen staff helped to ventilate a room using a fan. The rising cost of living has seen a greater than expected need for a new service for vulnerable people after launching three months ago in Christchurch. Non-profit organisation Orange Sky offers a free mobile shower and laundromat service, which is being used more and more by struggling low and middle income families. This bright orange hybrid van has been a welcome sight for many in Christchurch. It was launched by non-profit organisation Orange Sky almost three months ago, their first service in the South Island. The mobile van offers people the free use of a shower and laundromat services, along with six orange chairs, where guests are able to sit and have non-judgmental conversations. It's about you know, being open to anybody and just you know, obviously listening to their story. The free service aims to offer a bit of dignity to vulnerable and homeless people. However, with the rising cost of living, Orange Sky has also seen an increasing demand for their service from struggling low and middle income families. A lot more people are coming through and it's, it's sad to see. You know, families having to decide what they spend their, their money on, whether it comes out to drying clothes or buying food. It shouldn't be like that. One of the 70 volunteers in Christchurch is Wendy McCulloch. She's legally blind, with only 10% vision in one eye. McCulloch was worried her low vision would hamper her application to become a volunteer but was grateful to be welcomed with open arms. She says a random act of kindness was her catalyst to pay it forward, giving up her time to help others. I was outside the bus exchange one day. I was attacked by a group of teenagers and um, one of the, um, we call them friends, we don't like to call them homeless people. So one of the friends saw what happened and he came across to my aid. With the increase in demand, Orange Sky are looking at establishing more shifts in more locations. In Christchurch, the South Today. If I can still to come on the South Today. Dunedin musicians are celebrating a new building project on the way, and we'll take a look at the weekend weather. If you're at risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a mole map. Mole map is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. A poorly maintained heat pump can lose up to 35% of its output. The Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner team are experts. Their specially developed chemical wash is totally biodegradable. Call Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner and get the job done by the professionals. Duck in for a deal at My Mate John's. 25 to 75% off. John's Furniture Warehouse, Stafford Street and online at mymatejohn.co.nz. And My Mate John. Evening. I'm from the Parks Department. Have you got a permit for that fire? Mm -hmm. 
Tinakwe, welcome back. Hundreds of people turned up to Dunedin's Crown Hotel on Wednesday, and not just to spend some time at the bar. A local developer has permission to erect a multi-use building on the adjacent vacant lot, spurring musicians and supporters into action. Queuing up for prints and not pints. Musicians and supporters met up in the public bar of Dunedin's Crown Hotel on Wednesday afternoon, branding themselves ready for action. Uh, developers have bought land right next to the Crown and they're going to be building apartment buildings, which is bad news for venues. Dunedin has a horrible history of apartments being built next to music venues that then get the music shut down because of noise complaints from the new tenants, even though the venues have been there for a very long time. Dunedin musician Tane Cotton produced the design, which about 200 people had printed onto shirts ahead of a protest action this weekend. People brought their own shirts to be printed, some bringing bagfuls for bandmates who were at day jobs. Printmakers Signal Hill Studios provided the woman power and equipment, as it's something printer Eliza McMillan is passionate about. Love the crown. I've been coming here since I was a teenager, when I was uh, probably a bit young to see head like a hole and stuff like that. So, yeah, love it and I want it to be here for a very long time. Documents show resource consent has been granted by the Dunedin City Council for a multi-purpose building adjacent to the Crown, which would include accommodation. Action group Save Dunedin Live Music believes these type of developments can bring about the closure of music venues and have organised an event at high noon on August the 7th in the Octagon. They say the protest is set to feature speeches and music. In Dunedin, the South Today. And now recapping tonight's top stories on the South Today. A recycling scheme received a Supreme Keep Dunedin Beautiful Award for its efforts in recycling cartons with plastic outers and shiny inners. Invercargill's Q Pacific Island Learning Centre welcomed a special guest to celebrate 20 years of the Healthy Heart Award programme. And homeless people in Christchurch are thankful for the new initiative Orange Sky, which offers a free mobile shower and laundromat. And time now for a look at the weather. The South Today weather, proudly brought to you by MoreMap, the skin cancer detection specialists. Looking at the situation, bitterly cold air will arrive over the region from Sunday with light snowfalls likely to low levels. Expect some travel disruption and hazardous conditions for young stock. And temperatures will remain cold all through next week. Heading to the top of the South Island, northwesterlies and heavy rain for Nelson with a high of 15 tomorrow. Greymouth gets a high of 14 with late rain in northerlies. And Christchurch will have a windy day too with rain clearing and a high of 16 degrees. Travelling to South Canterbury and North Otago, well a fine day with westerlies tomorrow. Ashburton heads for a high of 16 and 15 for both Timaru and Uwamaru. Westwards now to the central lakes and the fine weather continues as we move through here with a mostly clear day and moderate westerlies. Wanaka and Alex will get up to 13 and Queenstown isn't too far behind on 12 degrees. Heading further south as we go through Balclutha, Gore and the Catlins you can all expect a cloudy day of, uh, with a high of 13 degrees with fresh westerlies tomorrow. And down to the deep south, well showers tonight in Invercargill and a low of 10. Tomorrow, uh, cloudy and cool with a few light showers and fresh westerlies. Expect a low of 5 and a high of 12 degrees. And then for Sunday, there's quite a dramatic drop in temperature with a low of 1 and a high of 5. That's because sleet and snow showers are on the way with gusty southeast winds. And lastly, heading to Dunedin. Rain clearing tonight, dropping down to 11 degrees. Saturday looks fine with high cloud northwesterlies and nice temperatures, down to 6 and up to 14 degrees. And wrapping up the weekend, it'll be quite cold and cloudy as the southerlies freshen, bringing rain and snow flurries possible to low levels, down to 1 with a high of 7 degrees, rounding off the weekend. And that's the news this Friday. For the latest news and videos from the southern region, head online to odt.co.nz. And you can follow Channel 39 on YouTube to catch our news bulletins on demand.
We'll see you again next week. Matiwa. Public interest journalism funded through New Zealand on air.